When indie developer Choice Provisions released BitTrip Presents Runner 2, Future Legend of Rhythm Alien in early 2013, it quickly emerged as one of my favorite launch window games for the still-fledgling Wii U thanks to its combination of elegantly simple gameplay, excellent pacing, a visual style that was as eye-catching as it was minimalistic, and perhaps most importantly, a wonderful, uplifting soundtrack that tied the whole experience together and drove it home. Now, just over five years later, Commander Video and his pals are back in the comparatively simply titled Runner 3. Despite the fact that the BitTrip brand has been scrubbed from Runner 3's title and is barely mentioned within the game itself for reasons I can't fathom, spending just a few minutes with Runner 3 leaves no room for doubt that this is indeed a new BitTrip Runner game. In fact, it picks up pretty much exactly where Runner 2 left off, with Commander Video and friends in hot pursuit of the Timbletot, a recurring mechanical supervillain who was first established as the series' main antagonist way back in the original BitTrip Runner. But like pretty much any BitTrip game, you don't need to know about all that history to jump right in and start playing. Runner 3, like Runner 2 before it, plays fast and loose with its story and isn't concerned with being consistent with itself or even making sense so much as it is just putting a smile on your face. Runner 3 certainly succeeds in that latter effort thanks to the return of Charles' voice of Mario Martinet as the game's narrator, who executes perfectly on a stylish but demanding script that's chock full of stylized writing, complicated word structure, and an amazingly astonishing amount of alliteration. Suddenly and unceremoniously, our convivial comrades are smacked by a troublesome tunagram. After an opening cutscene that can be skipped or entirely ignored if you so choose, the game kicks off and the actual running begins, and returning fans will find that the gameplay mechanics feel comfortably similar to what came before in Runner 2. In a surprising refutation of 2D platforming 101, the Runner series, Runner 3 included, does not give players full control over their character's movements. Instead, your chosen character runs automatically, with the player left to focus on dodging, destroying, or otherwise overcoming the many hazards and obstacles that stand between you and the finish line. The game starts off simply enough, steadily acclimating the player to basic actions like jumping, sliding, and kicking before layering in more advanced mechanics like double jumping and fast falling. Runner 3, much like Runner 2, then begins treating these individual actions like the pieces to a larger puzzle, gradually requiring players to execute longer and increasingly complex combinations of these various actions to survive the myriad obstacles in your way. And the margin for error is razor thin. Bump into almost anything and it's back to the starting line with you, or to the mid-level checkpoint if you've made it that far. If that sounds punishing, well, that's because it is. The bit trip games in general have never been for the faint of heart, and Runner 3 is no exception. But perhaps because of the game's significantly shorter overall length compared to Runner 2, Runner 3 feels like it ramps up in difficulty a lot faster than most newcomers will be comfortable with. With the training wheels coming off so quickly then, especially compared to Runner 2, Runner 3 feels decidedly geared towards series veterans like myself and doesn't seem particularly likely to attract newcomers to the franchise. Unfortunately though, that shorter overall game length I just mentioned is the jumping off point for some other problems that make Runner 3 unlikely to make the same kind of splash its excellent predecessor did. While the series' core gameplay is as engaging and entertaining here as it's always been, of that there should be no doubt, Runner 3 introduces some unexpected structural and pacing problems into the formula that significantly hamper the overall experience. With just 40 regular stages and 30 retro stages compared to Runner 2's whopping 125 respectively, Runner 3 isn't just shorter and narrower in scope than its predecessor, it's shockingly so. And while I would never dock a game simply for its length, it's what comes alongside that shorter length that's problematic. For example, while Runner 3's individual levels are noticeably longer and more varied than Runner 2's, likely in an effort to offset Runner 3's overall shorter length, longer levels also mean longer routes to and from each checkpoint, making repeat deaths more frustrating, especially when they occur very close to a level's checkpoint or finish line. And sadly, repetition seems to be a constant theme in Runner 3, and I'm not just talking about repeat deaths. While it's true that Runner 3's levels are longer and more structurally complex than Runner 2's, with each level having at least two paths and often many more subroutes along those paths leading to collectibles, Runner 3 also makes you replay most of those levels many times over if you want to achieve 100% and unlock everything the game has to offer. And I don't mean replaying each level just once, or even twice. Let's break it down. The first time you play any stage, you're confined to the gold bar path, where your goal is to collect 100 gold bars over the course of the level. Finishing a level then unlocks that level's gem path, which is a different and more difficult route through the stage where your aim is to collect 25 gems for use in the game's shop. Once you've completed both paths, you would think that level is done and dusted, right? 
not so fast. Each level has multiple collectibles that are often placed so that it's impossible to collect the item while also nabbing all the gold bars or gems in a level. This means that you're guaranteed to have to replay most, if not every stage, at least a third time to collect whatever you were forced to pass up in your first two runs. And this is before taking into account Runner 3's all-new Hero Quest system, which encourages backtracking even further by giving you new fetch quests to complete in already finished levels. Runner 3 starts you off with two playable characters, Commander Video and Command Girl Video. If you want to unlock the remaining nine characters, you're going to have to complete Hero Quests. Hero Quests essentially have you completing fetch quests for NPCs that can be encountered on specific routes in certain levels. These quests usually involve collecting three of something the NPC is looking for, but those pickups won't appear at all until you've begun the quest. So not only do these quests require that you backtrack yet again to already completed levels looking for new collectibles, completing a quest requires you to visit the right NPC again with their three items in hand. But because these NPCs can only be encountered at certain locations in specific levels, you have to replay those levels simply to reach the NPC again and complete the quest. And while these NPCs are happy to give you hints and guide you in the right direction if you can't find what they need, guess what? You have to replay their level and reach them again every time you want one of those hints. There are other minor annoyances as well, which aren't a big deal on their own, but do begin to add up over the course of the game. Loading times always feel just a bit too long, with levels often taking up to 20 seconds to load after you've selected one from the area map. Also, the shop is only accessible from a specific node on each area map, making it more difficult than it should be to visit whenever you want. And for some reason, there are fewer level obstacles that interact with the music this time around. And Runner 3's new dynamic camera, as great an addition as it often is, can sometimes obscure your view of the action and lead to deaths or missed collectibles that don't entirely feel like your fault. And this stuff is maddening, especially because certain other parts of Runner 3's structure have actually been improved over Runner 2. The retro stages, for example, are much easier to access this time around, only requiring that you find one VHS tape in each world, as opposed to a game cartridge in every single stage. And, in a twist, Runner 3's retro levels do not auto-scroll and are actually more akin to a traditional platformer this time around, with the player given full control over Commander Video's movements. And like I said earlier, Runner 3 still succeeds where it counts most, despite introducing myriad structural and minor design issues that didn't exist in Runner 2. The soundtrack remains phenomenal, and even if it is a little more experimental this time around and never quite reaches the lofty heights of its predecessor, Runner 3 is still quite capable of pulling you into a glorious rhythmic trance of gaming euphoria as you mowed up over the course of each stage, adding exciting new layers to the music as you go. While I do miss Runner 2's more minimalist, understated visual design, especially with regard to the menus and user interface, that's more of a subjective preference and it's hard to deny that Runner 3 otherwise looks great and runs smoothly, whether you're playing in TV or handheld mode. Meanwhile, Runner 3's characters and world benefit from the same bizarre design sensibilities that helped make Runner 2 so memorable, and developer choice provisions should be commended for absolutely nailing what is essentially a three-dimensional take on a Ren and Stimpy-esque art style. Runner 3 is a good game, and I like it despite the issues inherent in its structure and pacing. It still nails the series' big picture elements with rock-solid gameplay, a stupendous soundtrack, and a weird whimsical world to run through. But the devil's in the details, and as a follow-up to the phenomenal Runner 2, it falls a bit short. While it is a capable sequel, it is merely that. Capable, when it feels like it could and should have been so much more. While BitTrip fans will still undoubtedly find a lot to like about Runner 3 and find their five-year itch scratched, those going in expecting an experience on par with its predecessor would do well to temper those expectations. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media using the links in the video description below. Otherwise, keep it on Game Explain for more on Runner 3, the BitTrip series, and all things gaming.